Welcome back. Here is our solution. We learned how to configure a WebGPU pipeline. So in the last section, we'll introduce how to encode a rendering pass. Firstly, we can set a draw function, and then we can pass in the device and pipeline. and then add variable tabs. This is a web GPU device, and for pipeline is GPU render pipeline. Okay, we introduced that web GPU will use a schema called command encoder. We read all the commands into this encoder in advance, and then submit them to the native at once. So firstly, we need to create an encoder object through the device create command encoder API. You may see that this API is not an asynchronous API because it does not interact with the GPU. In fact, all the work is done in JavaScript. We'll use this encoder in a while and then do a series of command encoding work. And then we need to call encoder finish after the command is finished encoding. And it will return a buffer. In the end, we just need to pass the buffer to down through device queue submit API. And down will actually operate the GPU inside the browser and complete the final drawing work according to the operation commands we just added in the encoder in the order. And we should note here before submit, all the commands we add here have not actually happened and the GPU has not really worked. Then after submit, down and GPU start working. And during this time, the JavaScript thread is actually completely free. As I introduced before, at this stage, we do not need to wait for a return because the final result will be output directly to the canvas. So submit is not an asynchronous API either. But the entire drawing process is a completely independent asynchronous process in view of JavaScript. This is also the essential difference from the asynchronous operation mechanism in WebGL. And this is the core feature of WebGPU. We must have a good understanding of this asynchronous operation mechanism. So how do we add specific commands to the encoder? We can see that there are actually many APIs in the encoder, and each API corresponds to a command and we will introduce in the future tutorials. Our goal today is to draw graphics, so here we mainly use the begin render pass API to create a rendering pass. Well, the concept of pass is similar to layer. We know that many drawing software have this concept of layers, allowing us to draw graphics layer by layer, and then each pass is equivalent to a layer, so we can combine the results of multiple layers together to output the final effect that we want. This method is very convenient for us to manage the pipeline and the corresponding resources. In a typical scene, for example, when doing special effects, the entire graphics is usually draw first, and one or more special effects layers will be added to it. Another commonly used scene is to draw shadows. We generally draw a shadow layer first and then draw other elements in the entire scene. And then the two layers are superimposed together to form the shadow effect that you can see. And in the following videos, we will gradually explain this multi-pass situation. So similar to command encoder, render pass is actually an object equivalent to a sub-encode. So we can use the render pass to add the real draw commands to each pass. We will do the real work here.
And when all the drawing work is completed, we'll call this render pass end API to end the encoding of this pass. And the related commands will be written to the encoder. We see an arrow here because you have to pass a render pass descriptor parameter to the render pass. This parameter is to tell this pass what we'll do with the drawn content. For example, a simplest uh, situation would generally replace the content of the previous frame with a new frame, which means we usually clear the canvas and then perform a new drawing work. In this case, we need to set a background color. And here we'll use color attachments. We need to set this view field to choose where to display the output of this pass. Generally, we directly output it on our canvas, so we can pass it to draw through the context object we obtained before. And here we also need to write down the tabs. What the type of it? We can take a look at GPU canvas context. So here we can use get current texture in context and then call create view again to get a view buffer that can be operated by GPU. We don't have to know the concepts of texture and view here, and we may have a more detailed understanding in the following course. And here, we only need to know that the final result of this part will be output to the corresponding canvas. We also need to have a load OP option. This parameter means whether to load the content of the current view before drawing. If it is set to clear, it means clear the content of the view and then draw, which is equivalent to adding a background color or clearing the canvas. If we choose to set load, it means keeping the original content and then adding new content to the original one. For example, when drawing special effects, we'll add new content to the first level in the hierarchy instead of clearing. Of course, our demo needs to be set as clear here. Then we need to add a background color accordingly. We use a clear value parameter to set it. And we need to assign a RGB color. So for example, we take it as a black. Then we need to enter 0, 0, 0, 0001 here. So before drawing, it will fill the whole canvas with black first, and then draw other contents. Another parameter is called store AP which is opposite to load AP. And load AP is what to do with the view before drawing, but store OP is what to do with the view after drawing. This is also a very simple parameter. If it is store, then keep the result, and then discard is to discard the result. For general drawing, we want to keep the result, so we choose store here. And in some special scenario, we may choose to discard the color information. For example, where we only need to keep some depth information, so we can choose to discard the color information, and then we will have the opportunity to use this situation in the future. So we'll explain this in detail later. For most scenarios, we can keep this default values for other parameters in this render pass. Go back to the code, let's continue to see how to use commands to draw in the render pass. We give a comprehensive introduction to the basic structure of the GPU, which is a pipeline-based set of programs. So before drawing, we first load the pipeline. Here we can directly call the render pass set pipeline function to load the pipeline. And then in this pipeline, because of it is hard-coded data, neither the vertex shader or the fragment shader will need to reference external data. So we don't need to set other resources. We can directly call the draw API in the render pass directly. Finally, we call render pass .end to end the encoding of this pass. 
In the next video, we will explain how to reference and configure external resources outside the pipeline so that the relevant data in the pipeline can be dynamically updated. We need to set a number for draw. It is about how many threads to use to run the vertex shader. Each thread runs the code according to some of its own internal parameters and incoming parameters, and then generate specific point coordinates. After all the point coordinates are completed, we can proceed into graphic assembly and then use fragment shader to fill the color. In this demo, we would like to draw a triangle, so we expect the vertex shader to run three times and output the information of three vertices. So we can put three here. It means that the vertex shader in our pipeline will run three times in parallel. Because the vertex index of each run is uh, different, so it will output three different coordinates. The final effect is that these three points will form a triangle surface, which will then be rasterized. And then the corresponding pixel points will be obtained, and then passed into fragment shader. It should return three red pixels. So finally, we can see this red triangle on the screen. Let's run it. OK, here is the red triangle. So to help people to understand the relationship between draw and the vertices, we can set this triangle list to see the, the relationship between these three and the corresponding vertices. Let's first look at the options for topology. It means how to group the vertex information output by the vertex shader. Triangle list here means a triangle surface is formed every time. And what if we choose point list? Let's save it and refresh it. A red may be not a good color to detect. Let's change it to a pure white, for example. OK, I'm not sure if you can see that. And there are actually three white points here. So point list means to output each vertex as an independent point. Now let's try line list. It means that every two points will form a line, but we can only see there is one line in the canvas. And why? Because our figure has three points, point one and point two can form a line, but point three has no fourth point to connect with. So this point will be discarded at this time. And there is no second line. Now let's look into what line strip means. OK, we can see there are two lines in the canvas. So what does this mean? Strip means this pattern of end-to-end -end connection, which means that point 1 and 2 can form a line, and 2 and 3 can connect it. 3 and 4 can also form a new combination if we have a fourth point. So it is this connection, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. And so for this graph, if we would like to join with a line list, then we need at least four points. And there are actually two overlapping points. So in the same way, let's look into this triangle list and triangle strip. Triangle list is easy to understand. Every three points can form a triangle. To draw a quadrilateral, we need two triangles. That is to say, we need six points. Now let's try to change this. In the shader, we add three more points, for example, and let's see the final effect. And also here, we need to set it as a 3 in the draw. And let it begin 3 threads to run. And finally, it will output 3 point coordinates to form two triangle faces. Yeah, this is the result. In fact, as you see, if you put 3 here, it is actually only appear one triangle because the vertex shader only runs 3 times. So only 3 points are output. 
and only one triangle can be formed. And also, if you put five, it is also one triangle because only five points are output, and the remaining two points cannot form another triangle, so be discarded. What if we change it to straight mode? We just need to add a point here to see, and we also change this to four and save it. Okay, we see it is actually formed a quadrilateral. We input five or four here, which are the same, and they both output at least four points coordinates. That is because we share an edge here. The street mode is equivalent to one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, which is the end-to-end -end connection method to process the triangle surface. That is to say, each triangle face reuses two vertices of the previous triangle. So four points can actually draw two triangles. This method is obviously more efficient to draw and use fewer parameters. However, we can also see that this arrangement has high requirements on the rules and orders of the vertex data. If it is a complex polyhedron, we generally need to some streamline and order optimization on the vertex data to make use of its efficient drawing method. Because every additional vertex requires one more run of the vertex shader. Of course, these are not the functions of WebGPU itself. We generally apply mathematical algorithms to vertices while modeling. So for beginners, we just need to understand the difference combination and the corresponding relationship with draw and the quantity. You may like to experiment with the topology parameters and the number of draws to see the relative effect of different combinations on the final graph. So the whole process is finally complete. Well, there may be m multiple pipelines in the actual scene, including many objects. Then we need to traverse each object in turn through a for loop in this part. Then dynamically set the pipeline and draw points according to each object. For example, we can assume here that a for loop of 10,000 times, which will execute the draw command 10,000 times. We can take a look. The final effect is the same because it is equivalent to drawing the quadrilateral at this position 10,000 times. No matter how many times it is run here, in fact, the entire JavaScript runs efficiently in this encoder stage. In general scenarios, it will be cycled hundreds and thousands of times, but we will use less than one millisecond. In some large-scale scenarios, such tens of thousands of data can only take one or two milliseconds. We can say it fully used the efficiency of CPU. Then after this commit, GPU does actually starting working. These are two completely independent processes and do not interfere with each other. It is guaranteed to save this communication overhead to the greatest extent during the whole processing. Okay, let's take a review about the knowledge points. First of all, we explained the structure of WebGPU in Chrome. And basically, all browsers have the similar structure. Secondly, we focus on explaining a basic process of the WebGPU rendering, which is roughly divided into these steps such as how to request an adapter, how to request a device, and how to configure a canvas. In the process of creating pipeline, we mainly used create shader module and create render pipeline APIs. In the real drawing stage, we mainly need to know that what is a command encoder and how to use a command encoder to begin a rendering pass. Finally, we submit all commands list asynchronously through the device queue submit API. Then the GPU will go to the real work and then implement all the commands we encoded here. Okay, in the next lesson, based on this demo, we'll explain how to dynamically configure the pipeline and how to use JavaScript to dynamically update vertex data, including the color data, instead of hard-coded in the shader. 
All right, that's all for today. Welcome to subscribe our channel. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to contact us and leave comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.